get rid of this one bad thing in your golf swing to play easy, effortless golf. We're talking lead wrist being cupped. When this lead wrist cups, it opens the club face and it tends to lead you to a steeper downswing direction. So having this wrist cupped is a really horrible thing for the golf swing dynamics, for speed, for club face control, and it tends to lead us to wipe across the golf ball with an open face or a very kind of extended impact position, which means you're gonna hit the ground before the golf ball, thin or top of the ball, or if you do make contact, it's gonna be very high and weak. So if you were a slice of the golf ball, hit the ball high and weaker than you would like, checking your left wrist out at the top of the backswing is the first essential thing to do. What we're looking for is a relatively flat lead wrist at the top. When I say relatively flat, if I said to you the tour average will be 10 degrees of cupping, which is virtually nothing at the top, that is the tour average. Someone like your Dustin Johnson is in the opposite direction and he is minus 40 degrees of flexion at the top. So depending on the pattern of movement you have and also a little bit to do with your grip, I'd be looking for you to have a left wrist at the top or a lead wrist at the top under 10 degrees of cupping. If we can achieve that, you will play great golf. The stronger you make this wrist, the more you close the club face. The more you close the club face, generally in the downswing, the more you will create more rotation through the golf ball and a more passive, let's call it hand-free golf swing. Now, we still want hand action to create speed, and it is the point that's moving fastest at the most crucial part of the golf swing. But if that happens to be flapping and hitting a speed before contact too much, then that is gonna waste the speed and give you poor contacts. So we want the club face to be strong, the wrist to be flexed in delivery, and then rotate and throw that lag, built up lag, through the ball as opposed to before the golf ball. So there is hand action before people say, well, surely you're gonna hit the ball with hands to great speed. Yes, you will. Everything scientific wise is set up to make you throw this club without you trying to throw it. Gravity makes the club wanna do this. Centrifugal force makes the club wanna do that. Those two actions make the wrists want to go into that extension on the way down. But what I'm saying to you here is the backswing is our opportunity to get the club in the correct place to let the downswing happen much more naturally and automatic so we can play great golf. So if we can get the lead wrist from a neutral grip, roughly about 10 degrees max extension at the top, it will improve your golf. Now, if you have a strong grip at the start, which would be too much angle here and too many knuckles showing, then you will probably struggle to get 10 degrees at the top, you'll have more. But if you have more, it'll still be a more closed face relevant to your grip, which is still good. So trying to get the wrist flat, no matter what grip you have, is a good thing. If you have a weak grip or palmy grip, your wrist will look a lot flatter at the top without you even trying. Two little exercises for you to look at and try and hit golf balls with. Take a tee, place it in the little flappy area of your glove here, as you can see. What we're gonna do with that tee is basically at the top of your backswing, try and get that tee to go more towards the sky. If I cup the wrist, it goes more towards, not quite target, but certainly the hedge over there on the right side of this golf course. If I go into a flatter position, it points more behind me. So it moves from this direction to this direction and it moves more from there to there. So we're trying to get that tee to point behind the golf ball as far as you can and more towards the sky. And in doing that, that'll give you a feel of what the wrist should be doing. Then in the downswing, you wanna keep it pointing behind the golf ball. And again, pretty horizontal to the ground for as long as you can. As soon as it goes into that cup state, it works more towards the golf ball and works more towards target. So we're gonna really try hard when we're swinging to feel that that tee peg stays this side of the golf ball. This is exercise number one. So let's hit one now and try and keep the tee peg as much as we can this side of the golf ball. Now if I told you that felt really hard for me to do, I have a slight bit of cupping in my wrist at the top of the swing and a slight bit of cupping my wrist in the downswing. I'm not a PGA Tour player. I'm a 
scratch golfer, not a perfect golf swing. So quite often when I'm doing these demos, I'm trying to show you what I want you to do, not necessarily what I am doing. It's about influencing what you do to change, and that's what this is doing for me, rather than this is the perfect motion, the perfect position, perfect swing. It's about changing what you currently do, and the same with my golf swing. So that's drill number one. Now drill number two also involves a T, or a pencil, or a pen. And we're just gonna slide this now down the glove like so. Okay? The idea now is, if I cut my wrist at the top of the swing, that digs into my forearm. If I flatten my wrist or go into flexion, there is no real massive contact. It certainly doesn't dig in like this. It's a massive different feel. So what we're looking for you to do again initially is make some practice swings, make it pretty light in terms of contact and pretty much pain free. When we cup the wrist, you'll feel it dig in. Again, we've got the, the blunt side of the tee on top so it doesn't dig in much, but you'll feel it's still trying to want to dig into your skin a little bit. So it's a very different feel is a key thing. So I'd want you initially to make some practice swings. Right, don't really feel anything there. Then keep the tee in. Make sure it's still pointing up your arm as best you can at the start. You'll feel a bit of contact at address because your wrist should have a bit of cup in it at address. And then during the swing, we want to take that pressure away. Again, don't look for worldy strikes when you're doing it. It's pretty hard, especially if you're not already in a fairly flat state. As I said, getting this wrist flat will make that club face stronger at the top. When you get this wrist flat, the centre mass of the shaft will sit more behind the hands. And then on the way down, if you flatten it even more, which is what we wanted to do, it lets the club just shallow ever so slightly without trying to shallow the club. And then it creates that kind of centrifugal force working for us with the club wanting to outward spin and overtake and ideally overtaking post impact. So it's overtaken all the way down, but it only reaches the point of overtaking about here. So it's kind of lagging behind, but catching up all the way. And that kind of catching up or throwing action helps create that club head speed. What we see with a lot of golfers is it'll overtake just before contact or even at contact, meaning that they're not delivering the club with the max speed. They're losing the max speed a little too early. We have to use obviously what's going to work for you as an individual and we want to feed what you need to play better golf. But getting a flatter wrist in my 30 years of coaching helps all golfers. If you're a slice of the ball, it's kind of an instant fix to reduce the amount you slice the ball. You might end up pulling the ball more, but it'll reduce the amount of left right curvature instantly if you can flatten that wrist one degree, three degrees, five degrees, 10 degrees, depending on what you need. One thing that's good to notice when you stick a rod down the shaft, if you get that wrist cupped, you'll see where that rod points. When you get that wrist flatter, you'll see the angle of this rod goes higher. So the plane in the club changes from being steeper to flatter straight away by changing the wrist mechanics. And in the downswings, the same thing if the wrist cups, this points more inside the ball. If this flattens, it points more above the ball. Nearly every tall player, the club will point just slightly above the ball when we get the club down through this kind of left arm parallel position. So that's what we're looking to get closer to. It's not about being perfect. Again, as I say in a lot of my videos, it's about influencing what we need and being better at what we do to play better golf. Gradually, straight away, and forever.